Now that the LEO is released, many people want to see what the scanning process looks like and what the resulting data looks like. So today I will scan a couple of objects and then we'll transfer it to my PC and we'll process it and we'll see what the data looks like. The first thing I'm going to scan is this chair right here. So in order to do that, I have the LEO. I am actually scanning uh, or I'm streaming to my desktop PC over Wi-Fi right now. So you'll be able to see um, the scan data as it's being captured to be able to see what I have on my screen here. So I'm going to start a new project on the back of the LEO. And it will start my preview. It should also be, yep, should be streaming over there. Uh, right now, if I turn off show texture, it kind of gives you a, a general idea of the distance that's available. Um, I have my far plane adjusted all the way up. You can't see the overlay on my screen here. You can just see the data. But if you notice, as I back up here, yes, I'm getting pretty much the entire height of the main chair body in the field of view, but you can see the data is a little, a little more noisy. So your ideal distance is actually 50 centimeters. Um, again, if I have the texture turned off here, um, it kind of shows me my distance color. And you wanna be in the, the greenish area, so somewhere in here. Even at this more ideal distance, you can see I'm still, I can capture almost the entire uh, back of the chair at this distance, which is quite a bit larger than what you would get with the EVA. All right, so I'm gonna turn on show texture um, and I'm gonna scan here. I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna scan the chair. I'll do one scan, I'll flip it over, get underneath the scan. And then after that, I will go ahead and um, I'll scan a small Pelican case to show uh, something with a little more mechanical detail on it. So let's go ahead and start the scan here. And the key to scanning with the Leo is the same as with um, all other Artec scanners is you want to scan from lots of different angles. Um, depending on what you're scanning, it may be helpful to actually flip this uh, upside down and flip your screen down. It'll give you a little better view that way. I'm not gonna flip it upside down for this though. If you can see, I'm actually um, very easily able to capture this leg data here. And again, if you've done any scanning with the EVA, you can already tell that the field of view on this is quite a bit larger. If you're trying to get more in the field of view to help with tracking, you can always back up. Again, your data may not be as ideal, but it might be necessary for tracking. So that's why as I'm scanning, I'm just kind of moving in and out here. I want to scan from lots of different angles. What you are seeing on the screen here is a low resolution preview of what that final data will look like. So it's gonna look a lot messier. All right, I think that is about it. Let's look at that data. Yep, that looks pretty good. All right, um, also I can toggle off the texture and look at my quality here. So you're looking for mostly green, so you can see in some areas, like on the back here, I didn't scan as much right there. But that's fine. I'm gonna put the Leo down for just a second. Let's close out of that. I'm just gonna flip this chair over like this. And I'm gonna scan it like this. I'm gonna add a new scan. Start my preview. And let's start scanning. You can move uh, fairly rapidly with the Leo. With the Eva, your capture rate was up to 16 frames per second. With the Leo, on the other hand, um, you're actually capturing at 22 frames per second. That's your capture rate. Your, what you're actually seeing on screen actually comes in faster than that. This is a very smooth scanning experience.
Make sure I get all of that. And I already scanned the front and sides of each of these legs from the other direction, but I'm just making sure I'm getting a little bit more data. Make sure I get that front edge. All right, so that should be all I need for that guy. I'm gonna close that out. We'll flip this chair back over. And we're gonna do this Pelican case. I'm gonna do this guy in four different scans, uh, trying not to move anything that might be loose in here. So these, these clips might come out a little, bit, a little bit messy because I'm not actually able to secure those right now. So when I flip this over, they might move, but it'll be good enough for our purposes here. Okay, so I'm gonna back out of my current screen. I'm gonna start a new project. What this will do is you can actually, I could add all this in the one project, but I'm gonna have it in as two separate projects. So they'll come in as separate line items when I import it on my computer. All right, so I haven't really adjusted my texture brightness here at all. I'm just gonna leave it, um, but I could do that if I needed to. Um, yeah, all right, let's go with this. I'm gonna try to stay a little bit closer on this one. There's a lot more mechanical details. I don't want to get too close, but um, if, I'm, if I go a little bit closer on here, then it'll help me get those details a little better. Get it from that top angle. All right. So that's one scan. Just going to turn this over. We'll do another one. I'm making sure that as I'm scanning and I'm doing multiple scans that I have enough overlap on each of these scans so that when I go to align them, the system has enough data to work with. I don't care that the chair's in here. I want to remove that later. I'm also not too worried about the underside of this yet because I will capture that when I flip it over. All right, two more scans. Close that. And we'll add another scan. Make sure we're still streaming over there. Yep. All right, so this one, I'm gonna to try to scan from up above a little bit, try to get that little lip under there a little more. Getting a little close. As you can see, I do like to just scan from lots of different angles. It is a line of sight scanner, so it's only going to pick up what it's able to see. All right. And then one last one. Again, these clips may have moved a little bit, but I'm not too worried about that for this purpose. Let's add one more scan. Let's get from that way just a little bit. All right, so those are the four scans. One other thing that I want to show, question that a lot of people have is how large of an object can you scan? Well, you can go fairly large. Um, 
I do want to kind of show, I'll kind of start over here. And in general, I want to show how much of an area you can cover rapidly. I don't care about the quality of this data because I really just want to show the scanner scanning a lot of stuff. So I'll just start over here. And I'm just going to paint the ground here. So you can cover a large area. This is a old polished concrete floor. And I'm actually staying towards the back end of the field of view right now because I want it to be as large as possible. Um, just for scale, let's go ahead and scan some of this chair in here. And then we'll keep going. All right, so let's go ahead and stop that. So I covered that area fairly quickly. And if I zoom in, you can see that's a fairly sizable area that I just scanned fairly quickly. Again, it's just a flat floor, not a whole lot of detail, but I wanted to show how large of an area you could cover with this larger field of view that you get uh, compared to what uh, people are used to with the Artec EVA. So that's it for capturing the data. Um, let's go ahead and take this over to my PC and we will, we will see what the data looks like. Now that we've captured our data, I have the Leo over here, it is powered on. I have it connected with an ethernet cable. Um, you could transfer data uh, over Wi-Fi, over ethernet, as well as transfer it to an SD card and then plug that into your PC to transfer that way. I just plugged in the Ethernet cable because I want to kind of show how that works. So I'm in Artex Studio 13 here. I will go to File, Import, Leo Project. And there's a Connect to Scanner option. My scanner is right here. I can click that, click Connect. And I have a couple different projects here. So I have this Project 5 was where we scanned the chair. I started a new project before scanning the Pelican case. And then project seven is the one where I just kind of scanned a bunch of the floor to show how rapidly you can acquire a large area of data. So this will take a couple minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, transfer both project five and six into our, our tech studio. And then I'll come back and show the processing portion. All right, so the data imported properly. I, if I look here at my screen, um, I have the two different scans that I did of the chair. And then I have one, two, three, four of the Pelican case. Um, since this isn't a tutorial, I'm just gonna fairly quickly go through and edit out the parts that I don't need. I'm gonna come in here to my eraser. Um, I won't talk through everything that I'm doing, but um, basically what I want to do is come in and edit out all of the unneeded data. I don't need the ground that's underneath here in this case. Um, and on the, see, I don't care if I cut off a little bit of that chair there. Let's, uh, on the Pelican case, we don't want the chair in it. So I'll erase that chair from each of those as well. All right, so that's good. Uh, let's make sure select through is enabled. All right, so there's that first scan. We'll go here. Second scan, cut off plane. Now on this one, I'm actually going to come a little higher here because um, chairs and soft body objects like this tend to deform a little bit. So I'm actually going to erase a little bit of the part that would be deformed as well because we don't want any artifacts from that. And then also I don't need some of this backing with chairs and stuff. That back flap tends to be a little bit loose so if you turn it over um, it may change position so I'm going to go ahead and erase some of that as well. All right that looks good. Let's edit the rest of this. This is pretty straightforward. If I erase a little bit of what's underneath this Pelican case, it 
or a little bit of the bottom of that. I don't really care that much because I did flip it over. I scanned it from four different sides. And you could use the various tools available here in the eraser tool, but I'm just using the 2D selection because this is a pretty quick and easy setup here. There we go. And then we have one more. All right. Now that we have that erased, let's close that out. And let's go and align each of these. So I'll start with the chair. Um, I do like to work in the scan color a lot of times instead of the, the texture view. Um, it just helps me see the geometry a little bit better on these items. Uh, let's do that. All right, so that's the alignment for that one. That's looking pretty good there. Again, we're still working with the, the raw data. So it, looks, it still looks messy. This is raw, unprocessed. Same thing with the Pelican case here. Let's go ahead and align these. If you've watched any of the Artec Studio tutorials before that we've done, you know that you really just need to get close when you're clicking these common points and the software will take care of the rest. This shows the importance of having enough overlap on your scans so that you can click common points. All right, almost done. Is that, yep, I got that the right side there. Okay, so we're all lined up. Those were the four scans. This looks pretty good. I don't see any major holes. So go ahead and apply that. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, um, this will take a couple minutes. So what I'm going to do, uh, well, first of all, I'm gonna run global registration on each of these. And then once this is done, I will run a sharp fusion at 0.6 millimeters. Um, I will cut the video um, while the sharp fusion is going on because that will take a few minutes and you'd just be here staring at me. Um, so I will let that go. This is almost done for the global. On the chair, I'll do the same global registration for the Pelican case. And it looks like I do have a warning there. I'll clear that out in a second. We'll do a global registration on this guy as well. The software will automatically ignore the warning frames, but I like to clear those out so that I can tell what my max error value is. All right, so the Pelican case looks great. I'm going to look in here. We had a couple failed frames. No big deal. Um, all right, max error of, Let's see, yep. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get rid of some of these. Uh, looks like, yeah, I'll just go down to, it's a large chunk, but I think, yeah, I'll be okay. Let's delete that. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so that's all good to go. I'm going to go ahead and I don't, again, I'll run Sharp Fusion at 0.6 millimeters. Um, the Artec Leo is rated to 0.5 millimeter resolution. Um, the higher the resolution, the longer it will take the process, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do 0.6 at watertight for both of these, and then we'll come back and we will look at what that data looks like. All right, so the data has finished processing. Again, I did sharp fusion at 0.6 millimeter resolution. 
let's go ahead and look at this. So uh, the chair, actually, let me go ahead and run a small objects filter real quick on this guy. And then I'll run a small objects filter on this guy. Now I have not done any editing to these um, at all. So this is exactly, oh, that's done already. This is exactly what came out of this fusion. So if we go ahead and look at the data, uh, this looks quite clean. I'm actually very, very happy with how this came out. So there's the chair. Um, let's look at this guy. So this looks very clean. The biggest, the biggest uh, messy area, of course, is right here. So this is what I had mentioned while I was scanning. When I flipped that over, those clips were a little loose, and we got some, um, we got some stuff right there. Now that's pretty easy to remove. Uh, I'm not really going to worry about it for this, uh, for this right now. But um, I could actually, you know what? Yeah, let's go ahead and remove it. Uh, what I am going to do after this is share the data. So let me show you here. Uh, I am working with something that is 3.6 million polygons. Um, so this will take just a bit when I click the button, but I'm going to use 3D selection. I'm going to make this kind of small here. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove some of this garbled mess right here. Again, that's really just because that clip moved when I flipped it over. All right, let's go ahead and remove that there. All right, so that's good. I'm going to click apply. And if you haven't used the defeature tool before, what this does is it erases whatever you select and then automatically fills that hole back in. And this might take just a second, again, since I'm working with a higher polygon count model. Um, overall, I'm very happy with how this came out. See, that looks good. Looks like we got a little bit of stuff floating there, so I'm going to come back out to tools and do a small objects filter. All right, so there we go. We cleaned that guy up a little bit. Now, I actually haven't tested this yet, but let's go ahead and try this out. Um, the data itself, the geometry looks really, really clean. Um, but again, what I haven't tested is the texture application here. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, first of all, we are working with models that are very high poly. Uh, so this is 11 million. And this guy right here was three and a half million. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate both of these. Uh, because at the end of this video, I'm going to save this data out, and you can actually grab that in the video description to look at if you would like. Uh, but I'm going to keep these high-res versions, and then I'm going to take these copies, and I'm going to do a fast mesh simplification. Let's bring these down to a million polygons. So let's go ahead and run this here. I'm not quite sure how long this will take. I'll cut this if it starts taking a little while. Uh, all right, so I am left with two models that are about a million polygons. So let's go ahead and apply the color texture to this. So I'm going to apply this here, and this should go fairly quickly. Of course, I have not, oh, it's going to save right here too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut again, let this save, and then I'll show you what the texture looks like when it's done. The color application and the saving was going to take a couple minutes, so I went ahead and cut the video, but I went ahead and applied color to both models. So we have that here. Uh, here we have the chair. It's looking pretty good. There's a little unevenness in, in here, but overall it came out pretty great. And then if we look at the Pelican case, same thing looks, looks good. So what I'm going to do is here in this project, I now have a high resolution without color and I have low resolution or lower resolution with color applied. I'll export both of those as STLs or I'll do the, uh, the high resolution as an STL, the low res as an OBJ with the color texture. Um, I will also pre-orient them in the software beforehand, which makes it a little easier for viewing in various softwares out there. 
So if you have any questions about anything that you saw here, or if you would like a more tailored demo to whatever your specific application is, feel free to reach out over email or give us a call and we'd be happy to help you out.